All right, good morning DTF. I've kind of got myself in a little bit of a predicament with this rear differential rebuild. However, it does kind of present itself in a, another potentially good situation where I can uh, repair something else while I wait for parts, let's just say. So I've got new wheel bearings to go in the rear. I'm gonna go ahead and start down that path. I'm debating whether I've got the desire to do the rear trailing arm bushings and subframe bushings as well while I'm under here because I've at the point of having the rear wheels disassembled and the rear differential out I'm kind of at the point where I could relatively easy easily access the R tabs and the body mount bushings which also could potentially um, make the install of the rear diff back into the, the frame of the subframe a little bit easier, just having some clearance space to uh, wrench the four mounting bolts down, because these were pretty uh, tight to get to with uh, the rear subframe installed in the vehicle. So I'm going to start with wheel bearings, and then I'll kind of see where, where I end up at. Gotta remove this little clip here that holds the caliper to the, the mounting bracket. Looks like the caliper mounting bracket is going to be a 16 millimeter. hub has been kind of a project. Um, I tried just to use the impact wrench to remove the nut and the issue I was running into is there's this retaining clip inside there uh, and I couldn't get a screwdriver in to bend the tabs and remove it. So what I ended up doing was just uh, drilling a hole in one of the, the wider flanges and then I got this slide hammer um, that I threaded into that. Now this is the nuclear option in that uh, <laughs> there's no way that this clip, retaining clip, is going back in there. So I'll have to get another one of those. But we do have the nut removed. So now uh, I'll take the hat back off. And one little trick I was using was this C-clamp. 
against the uh, dust shield. That'll keep it from rotating on you when you're using your impact wrench. Um, it probably damages the surface of the, the brake hat a little bit, but honestly, I'm going to be doing a brake job on this at some point, and at this point in time, I don't really care about that. So, next, let's get the. Um, so, next, we'll get the brake rotor off, then we'll remove the hub, and then the axle out the back, and then that should give us everything we need for accessing the wheel bearing. On the front side of this wheel bearing assembly is their ABS or wheel speed sensor. It's probably a good idea to take that out before you remove the axle because the uh, the play when you remove it could run the encoder wheel right into the, uh, the sensor and maybe damage the sensor in the process. So that's just a five millimeter allen. Up on the hub, you should uh, be able to pull it right off. Alright, looks like I actually ran out of thread on here, so I'm going to switch this around to the shorter side. Decision point here. Um, having a little bit of a hard time pressing the hub out of the back of the wheel bearing and I don't think I'll be able to properly support it I could draw it in with the axle I suppose uh, when I try to reassemble but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go uh, full on out here and remove the entire uh, rear subframe so I can just do the R tabs and the, the subframe uh, body mount bushings because I'm already here I'm like I don't know, 40%. I might as well just go the rest of the way. I still got about five days before the uh, rest of the differential stuff comes in. So I've got the time. Might as well just do it right. Well, not necessarily right, but it's just while you're in there, one of those things, you might as well just do it right. Okay. Where I'm at with the rear subframe. Uh, sorry, not for, for not videotaping all this. I just. It's hot out here, I'm trying to get through it, so. Disconnected the brake lines on both sides. Uh, top side, I disconnected the emergency brake cable. Disconnected the sway bar, both ends. Disconnected the sh shock absorber, both sides. And then that released the control arm down so I could remove the spring. Now, uh, there was also on the driver's side, there was a tube that came down. It was just a vent tube. I disconnected that up under there. And so now that leaves me to uh, disconnecting the subframe. Oops. Where can I get the best view of this? Right there. Right there we've got a 22 millimeter uh, nut and then there's a couple allen heads that uh, secure that bracket to the body so I think I need to move that 22 millimeter and then the two allen heads that'll remove that bracket and then the subframe should release from the vehicle. Alright so I've loosened this nut here, which is the main body mount bolt, and then there's this bracket above. Uh, there's two six uh, millimeter number six Allen heads. Holding that on. These are a bit of snug fit.
All right, now the subframe should, when I lower the jack in the center, uh, lower off these bolts. I imagine there's a bit of a seized factor to go with that. subframe removed uh, I did end up just cutting the uh, e-brake cables they're garbage anyway um, just so I don't have to worry about messing with uh, detaching the underside of the car um, I'll get that when I replace everything so here's the R tabs not sure what that is just random shit and then the the body mount stuff all right, well this will make access to all this much easier. And I can see already the installation of this back into the car could be fun. Uh, I haven't decided whether I'm gonna do it with diff installed or uh, do that afterwards. I may just put the diff in and put the whole thing on that transmission jack. I feel like I could lift the whole thing with that and be somewhat square and not front heavy with that attached. I did break one brake line here, so I'll have to get that replaced as well. So the next step will be removing these bolts on the R-tabs and then pressing those out and pressing new ones back in. Here's my R-Tab bushing removal setup. I've got a 12 millimeter threaded rod going all the way through. I've got a deep well 32 millimeter socket on the side with the large uh, rubber uh, lip on it. I'm going to be drawing it through the hole and into the deep well. And then on the other side I've got a 17 millimeter socket that's big enough to push on the bushing but not too big that it won't fit through the actual hole that the bushing is in so I've got a vice grip on one side to manage the rotation and then I'll just twist it with this 19 mils uh, box wrench this way and that'll just pull it right out of there painless and only about $25 for all the hardware and then you can also use that I'm going to use that to basically in the re reverse fashion uh, press the new ones in or draw the new ones in with, with the same uh, method 
All right, I've shown you one. I'll do the rest of them, and then we'll move on to the wheel bearings. Here we're pressing the arc tabs back in. Same rod as before that we took it out with. Just got a smaller uh, socket on the, the wide side. Actually, I just realized I uh, set this up backwards. This wider side is supposed to be to the outside on both of these ears. So let me flop that around and then we'll get to wrenching. Initially, I was using a larger socket on the, the wide side here to press on the the, the mushroom part of it, um, but I kept having issues with it at the very last quarter inch of it where it was just mushrooming out and I couldn't get it to press all the way through. So now I've got a smaller socket and that's pressing on the metal sleeve that goes all the way through so it helps kind of draw the, the front end um, as I'm pushing it through. Set of our tabs done, spot apply, and complete. Alright, now for the subframe bushings. Alright, here's a setup that's working for this sub mount bushing. I had a problem with this just being cantilevered and wanting to force up, so I strapped it down to the press itself. subframe bushings going in. I beat them in most of the way with a hammer. There's two notches on either side that kind of line up the notches in the bushing so you can't mess up the alignment on that. I'm just gonna press it on in here. I did put a little bit of silicone grease inside there. here that cups it around the outside so it has room to move up inside of it. A little spacer. All right, next we're pressing, we're gonna hammer the, the hub out of the center of the bearing. Just gonna use a socket that's about the size of the, the hub portion, so it'll slide through the bearing, and then it should just pop out the other side. It may take half the race with it, but uh, if it does, we'll just pull it off with the bearing separator. So we took half the race with it. We'll just separate that with a bearing separator. The rest of the bearing will come out. I'm gonna remove this circle clamp and push it out from the other side.
tightened 127 newton meters. spring and then I'll bring it up to a little bit closer to right height then we'll work on the brake lines and the same laser bar and then we'll finish bringing in the front of the subframe currently I have the rear of the subframe for that one diff mounted bushing that's holding the back end up and then I've got the nut and plate uh, here it is Slightly tightened up, but it's not full home yet. Even a little bit of droop, so I can get access to things a little bit easier. <clears throat> All right, with my suspension set up, this is actually the OEM top bushing. It calls for it to be on the bottom here for my setup, so don't get that mixed up with OEM if that's what you're running. Tighten down to 100 newton meters. All right, that's this side. We'll move on to the other, and then we'll come back, do brake lines, stabilizer bar, and then we'll get the differential or the uh, sorry, the half shafts in. All right, next up here is to put the drive axle back in through the hub assembly and then attach it to the uh, differential flange. The differential flange bolts are on mine are M10 and those are tightened down to a hundred newton meters. And then after that is installed the hub nut goes on and then that's going to be tightened down to a torque uh, for proper preload of the bearing. And then this retaining clip will be smashed in behind it. I probably won't tighten this down until I have the wheels on and the car sitting on the ground. Um, just so I have some extra backing to hold everything in place while I get, get it tightened down. The axle to differential flange bolts, like I said, M10, these are uh, number 12. Same thing on the other side, I'll put the speed sensor in on this side, and then once those are both in, we're going to go in here and jack up the rest of the subframe. Alright, so I brought the subframe home with the jack, I've got the two side bolts just lightly started, and now I'm going to tighten down the, the body mount bolt, the 22mm, and that gets tightened down to 140 meters.